Welcome, explorers. My name is George Brady. Born and bred in Gateshead, I was Professor of Natural History at the University of Durham from 1875 to 1906. I was also one of the first ever marine biologists. In other words, I studied organisms living in oceans and other bodies of water. In total, I collected, examined and named around 6,000 specimens from all over the world. Many of these were sent to me from some of the first ever ocean expeditions. And all of them are contained in the Brady Collection, named after yours truly, here at the Great North Museum. Now, the creatures that particularly interested me were ostracods. Look down, and you will see some of them wriggling around. <laughs> Don't worry, they aren't really this big. These have been magnified under a powerful microscope. An average ostracod is around one millimetre long, though some can grow to a whopping 2.5 centimetres. Their name comes from the Greek ostracon, meaning shell, and that's just what they have. A pair of shells, to be exact, joined with a hinge and protecting the soft body inside. This makes them look rather like tiny beans or seeds. The shell opens slightly to let the ostracod poke out several pairs of wispy limbs for swimming, grasping and feeding. Ostracods live in water all over the world. They're in oceans, lakes, rivers and ponds. They're in freezing Arctic seas and tropical swamps. They're even in muddy puddles and soggy soil. In total, about 70,000 species of ostracod have been discovered Though there are probably plenty more around that nobody even knows about yet. They're a vital part of the ecosystem as food for fish and even whales, who gulp down thousands of the tasty little fellows in one mouthful. But what really fascinated me about ostracods is the way that their features vary. For example, some species don't have eyes. They rely on other senses to find prey and keep clear of predators. And while some float in drifts of smooth, round blobs, others have a flattened shape to help them zip through the water. You might also notice that certain ostracod species have small, horn-like spikes, or perhaps sharp spines, ridges or bumpy bits. These features can help them look a lot less appetizing to predators and may help them to burrow into the seabed. The biggest ostracods look like smooth orange marbles with enormous glowing eyes. These eyes are reflective and can detect light from other creatures, which is a handy way of locating prey in deep, dark waters. In comparison, some ostracods are ghostly, delicate little creatures. They live in the far northern Atlantic, where they shimmer like tiny clusters of stars. Meanwhile, down at the South Pole, you might find long oval ostracods gleaming like pearls in the icy Antarctic seas. And sometimes it's not the shape of ostracods that's so interesting, but rather where they are found. For example, when enormous shoals of minuscule Pacific ostracods are found in the Atlantic, it's possible to work out the pattern of ocean currents which must have carried them there. Just imagine being swept all that way, whirling and swirling over thousands of miles. And of course, some species stand out more than others. I'm thinking of bioluminescent ostracods. In other words, ones that glow in the dark. Nicknamed sea fireflies, these luminous fellows live in the Sea of Japan and create beautiful blue clouds in the water. <laughs> During the Second World War, Japanese sailors scooped them up in large jars as they gave off a light bright enough to read by. As I said earlier, my ostracod collection was made up of specimens sent to me from scientific expeditions. I must mention the greatest and most significant of all, the Challenger expedition. HMS Challenger set sail from England in 1872 and changed the course of marine research forever. The ship travelled to all the world's oceans except the Arctic. At each stopping point, the crew trawled or dredged the sea, collecting all kinds of marine life and making detailed observations. 
They discovered over 4,000 previously unknown species, many of which ended up in my carefully catalogued collection. Now, ostracods aren't just interesting, they're also important. These tiny creatures have been around for about 500 million years. This means that their fossils give us vital clues to the past, long before humans existed to keep records of it. Here's how it works. Let's say we find a layer of rock containing lots of ostracod fossils. This tells us that there was once a sea, lake or river in that place, and in which prehistoric era. The species of ostracod tells us whether it was salt water or fresh water, its temperature and even how acidic the water was. In this way, it's possible to work out how the planet developed and changed over millions of years. But it's not all about the past. I may no longer be around, but ostracods are. And because they're so sensitive to change, they're telling you right now how human actions are affecting the world around you. Scientists are seeing a drastic decline in certain ostracod species, with some disappearing altogether. This is partly caused by increased water pollution, such as sewage and pesticides. It's also directly linked to global warming. Warmer water kills off ostracods who need low temperatures, while melting ice caps can dilute oceans so much that many saltwater species simply can't survive. Also, when high levels of carbon dioxide are absorbed into the oceans, it makes the water more acidic. This dissolves the calcium carbonate needed to make hard shells, meaning the ostracod species must adapt or die out. So please, save our precious planet and let our awesome ostracods survive for millions of years more. Thank you for listening.